All right, so we're going to be doing a lab called the Physical and Chemical Changes Lab, which will be divided into two class periods. It is extremely important that you use your time wisely. So what I want you to do on day one of the lab is the experimental sections A and B. And then I want you to do experimental section C on day two with part D, which has the extra questions. Okay? So if you're going to be doing day one, I would suggest allocating maybe 15 minutes for part A and answering the questions A1, A2, and A3 at home. Okay? Then for part B, I would maybe use 10 minutes to do part B and answer question B1A at home. And then I would use maybe 10 minutes to do part B2 on miscibility and wait and do question B2A and B2B at home. Okay? Otherwise, you will not finish the lab. All right? So let's talk about experimental section A. You're going to have a few beakers labeled with water, table salt, table sugar, rubbing alcohol, wax, copper 2 sulfate and mineral oil. Um, do not mix the substances up. Don't contaminate the beakers. Don't use different spatulas. Keep the same spatula in each beaker so you don't cross contaminate things because it will mess up your results and the results of those that do the lab after you. Okay. Now, even though we may have water and table salt and wax, um, and mineral oil in beakers, which seem like ordinary substances to you, I want you to treat them as chemicals. So what has happened in the past is with the copper 2 sulfate, which is the blue crystal, I've had students just pick it up in their hands and just sort of like, you know, throw it around like it was just some ordinary substance. But I need you to get um, into the habit of using uh, safe laboratory procedures, which you watched a video on at the beginning of the year. Now, when you are taking these substances and observing their colors, you're going to be recording their colors here in this table, okay? You have to use your own eyes to determine the color, okay? You don't ask other people what they think the color is. You look at the color and you record what it, what it appears to you, okay? The form means is it a solid, is it a liquid, is it a gas, um, is it a crystal? Does it look like it's a crystalline solid, okay? Um, Odor, we use the wafting technique to obtain the odor, and um, you learned about that in a, um, in a video at the beginning of the class, and you're going to record your observations. Then what you're going to do is you're going to be heating it, and what you're going to do is we're going to have some um, aluminum foil squares, which are going to be like, you know, this big, okay, like really tiny aluminum foil squares. And if you take those aluminum foil squares and you fold them up into fours, so let me use a post-it as an example because I don't have any aluminum foil squares right now on me. But if you take your little aluminum foil square and you fold it up, and then in this little depression in the middle, what you're going to do is that's where you will put a very, very small amount of your sample, okay? You don't need a ton of it at all. So you're going to put your little sample in there, and I don't want you to heat it in the classroom because uh, it's going to smell like smoke, and I don't want the fire alarm to go off. So what you're going to do is you're going to go outside. I would prefer you went down to the grass far enough away so that way um, none of the smell is going to blow inside the classroom when the doors are open, okay? So what I want you to do is take um, a match, and you're going to... Um, place it uh, close to the substance and you're going to hold it there and you're going to observe what happens, okay? There are a number of things that could happen. It might smoke, it might bubble, it might change color, it might melt, and those are things that you have to record in the observation um, for your heating, which would go right here, okay? All right, so that's what you're going to do for part A. Um, be efficient, be organized, and since you're heating things, I want you to hold your hair back, and I want you to be careful when you heat the rubbing alcohol. Rubbing alcohol is flammable, so you don't need a lot in your 
um, aluminum foil square. What's going to happen when you light that is it will catch on fire and then when all the alcohol is gone it will just go out on its own. But I have seen in the past when students put a lot of rubbing alcohol in their aluminum foil square they can get a flame that's like this high and everybody screams. Okay, So we're not screaming, we're not going to be using a lot of rubbing alcohol and you've got to pull your hair back because we all know I take care very seriously. Okay, um, then don't forget to answer these questions at the bottom, okay? You don't need to do this as a group. Just move on. Okay, now, yeah. Yeah. for part B on solubility and miscibility. Solubility pertains to putting a solid into water. So you need to write that down. We only use the term soluble and um, insoluble when we're putting a solid into water. So soluble and insoluble. These two terms have to do with putting a solid into water. Okay? So if it's soluble, let me see, solid in H2O. Okay, so that's what we use these two terms for. Okay? If a solid dissolves in water, we say it's soluble. If it doesn't, we say it's insoluble. High solubility would mean it like completely dissolves, okay? Moderate would be would mean that most of it did, okay? None would mean it didn't dissolve at all. Now, um, when you are adding table salt or a, a table sugar to water, you don't need to add a lot. You add very, very little. So let me give you an example because you're going to be using a spatula. It's probably going to be a metal spatula. So if you have a spatula and you've got a spatula in the container, okay, you're only going to need like like that much. You don't need a lot, okay? In the past, students put too much in and then their observations are not accurate, so don't put a lot in. Okay. Um, in terms of miscibility, okay, there are a couple of terms that you need to be familiar with. So, we only use miscible and immiscible when we're talking about liquids being mixed with other liquids. So, these two terms are for talking about liquids mixing with liquids. And that's something that you're going to want to make a note of. Okay? So, when you're doing section B2 on miscibility and you're mixing rubbing alcohol with water and mineral oil with water and rubbing alcohol with mineral oil, when you mix two liquids together, if they mix uniformly and you can't tell where one is and the other one, where the other one is, and it's one phase, it looks the same throughout, okay? That would be miscible. Immiscible means that they didn't mix. It means in one section I've got like rubbing alcohol and another section I have mineral oil, okay? You would see two distinct phases. That is immiscible. Um, in terms of the more dense liquid, we talked about density previously and you watched a video on it. When you have liquids that mix uniformly with each other, meaning they're miscible, it's going to be one phase and it would look like this in a test tube, okay? You can't tell which liquid is more dense because you don't see one liquid in one place and the other liquid in another, okay? So you can't tell the density when they mix uniformly and they are miscible. But if I have two liquids and when I have them in a test tube, they don't mix uniformly and it looks like this, okay? This is immiscible and the more dense liquid would be on the bottom. So this would be more dense like this, okay? And you're going to use this data that you've observed to answer question B2A and B2B. Again, I would wait and I would answer those questions at home. If you have time during class, great, go ahead, work on them. But um, I just don't want you to waste your time on the questions. I want you to get as much um, data collected as you can, make as many observations as you can. 
okay? Um, and I believe that is about it for day one.